very simple in upgrade you just need the material needed to upgrade and then you're off to go now moving on to the next point that is important awakening the skill and awakening the hero to immortal there is an awakened skill it's not really an awakened skill it's just an addition kind of for Toku, the deadly blow in the first two turns of a battle, it increases the attack and critical by 20%. So to unlock the awakened skill equals an increase in critical only in battle for attack and critical at the beginning of the battle, pretty much the first two, uh, two turns by 20%. So this increase will help in actually causing more damage and easier landing critical so that will land and drag with it the pursuit the follow-up pursuit and help in ending the battle faster now moving on to the next the sigil okay so when we're talking about sigil tuku has mainly four main sigils that can be used one of them is samurai well, of course everyone knows samurai it actually helps uh, to cause more pursuit and follow-up pursuit by after launching a basic attack 25% to actually launch another attack so one is samurai the other is sin increases the armor pierce sin pretty much by increasing the armor penetration will help you in actually being able to cause more damage etc etc most 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 stigmata is either for increasing the damage or helping the hero cause more damage or increasing one of the attributes that the hero is using or giving him an additional attribute like for instance in flame which causes damage also to the enemy so the first two is going to be samurai and the second one is going to be sin the third one in selection is going to be in flame and the fourth one is going to be berserk now based on in flame and berserk suck badly when it comes to tuku and they're not a good selection at all because it lowers her pursuit and follow-up pursuit which is the continuous attack slashing you see it's not very beneficial actually because Tuku operates more on I want more attacks more damage slice the enemy faster so Samurai and Sin is one of the good selections now that doesn't mean you cannot play around with your Sigil just like I do I've added Judgment I've noticed that Judgment does help in increasing the damage because it holds the attribute of attack plus 20 percent of course if you're gonna go with the i want it by the book you should actually add sin that's why i keep two of these lovely ones and you can pretty much just exchange back and forth based on what you want but sin is actually the accurate one so sin actually should give an increase for the broken armor you see that increase armor penetration uh, armor penetration is exactly similar to the broken armor uh, it's not gonna add to the attribute of broken armor but it reacts and acts similarly okay let's actually put back what we exchanged to actually just show the difference and every one of these sigils holds attributes in it so this one for instance has critical plus 10 percent which means it will increase the critical by 10 percent 10 digits 10 and then the next one has uh, critical damage resistance by 10%. So the difference would be if you remove one. Let's look at critical damage resistance. Critical damage what? Resistance. It's at 84. Let's add it back. Okay, let's have a look at critical damage resistance. Now, critical damage resistance is at 94. Again, for showcasing... critical damage resistance 84 and then we add it directly and you can also see the overall power increase switch and back critical damage resistance 94 so one way of manipulating actually the attributes is from the sigil pretty much next of course is the samurai sigil the best selections that you can go for is hopefully ones that have speed and attack speed and attack speed and attack as much as you can and then blocking and damage immunity that's kind of some of the best selections you can do and it does help by increasing her speed and increasing the attack which is exactly what you want in battle now moving on from the sigil and we already mentioned 
the different types that can be used and the preference the preference is going to be samurai sin and we don't prefer using inflame or berserk the two on the bottom next is the relics now when it comes to the relics it's a simplified process of collect the relics nine relics and then upgrade the relics to t1 the relics on its own stands alone in adding a bonus of attributes critical critical damage damage immunity armor hp and attack of course you need to upgrade the level itself of the relics if you're looking at someone who doesn't have that yet the each time you upgrade the nine relics by 10 10 levels so it's going to be 10 20 30 40 50 60 you actually unlock one of the master levels the relic master level so each time equals one percent additional hp and attack so as soon as we reach 50 here it's going to unlock master enhancement level number five which will give hp five percent and attack five percent okay so the relics do play an important role and they actually give attributes if you read this for once deadly pursuit okay uh, as soon as you have three relics and let's actually remove some of the relics to showcase something of the difference as soon as you have just three relics you unlock and you can see the text highlighted deadly pursuit deadly pursuit increases the damage of basic attack and pursuit to six at 160 percent of damage so let's actually have a showcasing of let's do a battle with the relics and without the relics of course the relics phew, we dropped to 13 million with the relics we're close to 18 19 ish so let's go and actually watch Tuku without the relics and with the relics okay so for this fight we're gonna go with 37 37 why specifically because they're strong enough so we can actually notice a difference with two cool with the relics and without the relics so now we're looking at four five million per attack okay so now we can just adjust that you can do four five million without the relics now we're going to be adding all the relics or actually before adding all of it we're just going to add the first three so we can witness the deadly pursuit increase which is the first attribute you gain by having three relics deadly pursuit so deadly pursuit should increase your attack and that is exactly what you want in the game so let's go directly to 37 37 and watch can she do more damage more than four or five million per attack let's see okay so now she's at seven ten eight and nine and fluctuating between the numbers so yeah it does confirm that by having only three relics and master enhancement level six which is hp and attack plus six and plus six and the relics themselves are t1 okay they're just standalone almost two million uh, that's a high amount actually so three relics can do this wonder now if we add more relics we're talking about the full set the nine relics which will uh, actually unlock the second attribute which is pursuit so you have deadly pursuit and then after it directly you have pursuit unlocking it will give you all that beautiful shiny text now which gives you the core skill of four pursuit level four so it increases the chance of pursuit so that's something you want and follow up pursuit by number of attacks and pretty much it will just give you that and an increase in damage increase in damage and an increase in triggering pursuit okay let's go into battle and watch the difference with nine relics directly at t1 in comparison to three relics and in comparison to zero uh, zero relics okay so as you can see she's become more savage she almost took out two of the enemy she also uses uh, used her skill in round number one and she's doing much much better by that increase just by the relics so yeah definitely it did make a difference in battle even if you look at the damage it's completely better when she's the one only doing that high amount of damage just by actually adding the relics so nine relics is essential to have and upgrading it to t1 and actually taking the master enhancement relic to level six now moving on from the relics you still have a little bit of things when it comes to building a hero 
the gyms and of course you will notice there is so many mistakes in the gyms so we're gonna be mentioning the gyms that you should select when it comes to Zuku okay so the number of gyms actually are a couple interestingly one of them is the cat's eye so we're looking here at additional attributes of attack critical damage resistance and critical resistance so this is one of the good gyms you can actually add to Tuku. the next one is going to be this one on the opposite side it adds hp it doesn't add attack it adds critical and critical damage resistance and then the next one will be the bloodstone it adds critical damage and critical damage resistance if you're noticing something if you're noticing something between the three critical critical damage resistance and then critical damage resistance critical resistance and then the next one is critical damage critical damage resistance and then the next one is going to be critical damage resistance you will notice that we always try to give Tuku critical damage resistance and other attributes that match her needs. Of course, the cat's eye is one of the best that matches both. And then this one, and then you have the blood stone, critical damage, critical damage resistance. And, and also you have, let's see if I have any one of them. And this one also in terms of the increase of HP, attack, and critical resistance. So our main focus, aside there are other gems, but we're focusing on the ones that at least have. Of course, I'll add at the end of the video all these details. We're focusing on the critical damage, critical damage resistance, and attack mainly, which you can see here in the gem selection. Now, this one has critical and critical damage resistance, critical critical damage resistance, critical damage resistance and critical resistance, critical damage resistance and critical resistance, and critical damage and critical damage resistance. Now, why did I make that specific selection? First, because she benefits from these attributes the most. Second, it increases my critical and critical damage and critical damage resistance. That's why you see the numbers have improved by critical at 89.9, Critical damage well, is still a work in progress, 58.5. Critical damage resistance is finally better, 94%. So, if we remove one of these or remove all of them, let's watch the tragedy unfold by removing them. So, the critical went down to 79.9, the critical damage 48.5, the critical damage resistance took a massive plummeting to 66%, and so on. So now we can see that the gyms do make a difference and of course upgrading the gyms across the stages until level 120 or at least 90 it increases the HP and the attack by a percentage. What will that do? It will benefit you in battle because you have more HP and more attack. Now if you click directly like that and watch that beautiful animation you can pretty much select also a skill in battle. Before we go into the skill of battle, let's look again and observe all the different things we can see. So the Stigmata Enhancement Master is similar to the Relics Enhancement Master. After you reach a specific level of upgrade, it gives you an increase or a boost in HP or attack. Same, same scenario. The only difference is at level 150, you get damage immunity plus 6%. Now to get that, you kind of need to upgrade all the relics and keep leveling them up. Overall, based on all the relics we have, you can see that it gives us an overall increase of overall power by 2 million and a fraction close to 3 million. Now when it comes to skill damage, you have three. Uh, the first one you actually unlock after you have all gems and almost at four stars, all of them or five. And it gives you three options, Island, uh, either Silent Approach, which increases the damage immunity, and then Charge Penetration, and Whirlwind Assault, Whirlwind Assault. So the Whirlwind Assault at the start of the round increased critical damage by 30%. You would use that if you want a speedy attack and an increase in damage only in the first round. Second one, if you're going after a longer damage, and it kind of depends, you can mix and match, try to use this or this. If you just want to increase the damage, hopefully it will happen. Now, the difference is the charge penetration can slow the pursuit and follow-up pursuit a little bit in battle, 
in comparison to this the world wind assault and if you compare it to the silent approach the silent approach is when you're in a battle and the enemy is stronger than you and you will be taken out faster and you need just that extra boost of i can survive a little bit longer it's not going to give you hp it's just going to reduce the damage a little bit in the battle now silent approach is when you want to survive a little bit past the first and the second round it can help charge penetration if you're going for a long one and you're just hoping to increase the armor penetration and it will only last one round anyway and the last one is i just want to increase some of the damage easier so these are the three and you never know which one can actually benefit you in battle so you might want to mix and match depending on the battle itself and they don't they do not always function the way i asked because tuku is unpredictable in the pursuit and follow-up pursuit now the next one is when you have six five star gems what does that mean it means each one of these gems has been upgraded to star level five like this one five stars you can see here so that one is much much nicer when dealing damage for every 10 percent drop in the target's hp increases the damage dealt uh, at the enemy the, the one you're attacking by eight percent up to 40 percent increases allowed now the benefit of having fatal strike is the potential to increase the damage massively the potential if you're against the boss or against a uh, player versus enemy that the damage can be increased of course you still will need to have time and different heroes to boost Tuku's damage but it can really make a difference next one shield breaker increase damage dealt against enemies carrying a shield so this one is when you're going uh, up against a team that has the Emperor, for instance, or uh, Afra, or Thinker, some type of hero, or Rex, even Mecha Rex, some type of hero that has a shield, or has Phantom, or something, and in the battle, you just want an increase of damage against that specific hero, because he's a number one, and you're trying to take him out, or he's somewhere in the back line, and you just want something to give you an extra boost of damage against that specific hero. This is a good selection next one the soul bind at the start of the battle absorbs four percent sun, uh, sunder and sunder operates just like broken armor and damage immunity which will actually reduce your damage from two random enemies lasting three rounds soul bind will be triggered again when an enemy dies so what soul bind uh, actually does is just leech off the enemy a little bit of broken armor which helps you to actually attack them easier causing an increase in damage and when they attack you you take less damage in battle if you want to actually look at broken armor and damage immunity from that perspective simply uh, simply it will help in increasing your attack and help in reducing some of the damage you take and it will last for the first three rounds and after that you need to kill an enemy and then it will restart again so the three attributes are very nice, very special. And at six, six stars, uh, this is more for the player versus player, as you can see. So we're not going to really dive into depth about it. But it is a way if you're interested in ranking in player versus player, whether it's the daily or the uh, legend mall, uh, legend arena, sorry. Uh, simply, it will give you more attack and more HP and more force very simply and the selection relies fully on the enemy you're going up against so gaining 10 force and 10 force resistance and 20 effective resistance that can help you pretty much in causing more damage more attack taking less damage because of how force and force resistance works and at the same time the effective resistance can help maybe in you not getting stunned easier something like that next is going to be the same thing but it will give you hp and the last one is going to help you in reducing the damage damage reduction so pretty much the three core skills or the three attributes gained by the gym are essential because they can really make a difference especially if you're interested in ranking up against player versus player so overall you can see there is many things that Tuku can benefit from whether it's the awakened skill whether it's the uh, sigil whether it's the equipment the t2 the exclusive and so on now moving on to the next thing which is the talents when it comes to tuku the general talents is one two two one which is the 
simplified version of the selection of hero talents and pretty much number one is to increase the damage against the specific sub faction of heroes the second one is to increase the damage if the enemy has higher hp than you the third one is part of the damage you cause after two rounds the enemy will take that part again automatically every two rounds okay as you can see and the last one is to increase your damage in by its own each round pretty much so one two two one is a good selection another selection of course is one two 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 why two 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 and the two at the end rush offense helps Tuku in giving her a chance of a triggering of a percentage that can help her to attack again she attacks again she does more damage that lost hit kills the enemy voila you won so it functions similar to pursuit and follow up pursuit but only by a percentage and it's applicable for any hero actually next will be if you're going up against mega and supporter sub faction heroes then you would select two regardless of uh, the following of the normal by the book direction or not you would select number two because you're going up against megan supporters more or you're having an issue with a specific hero that's a meg and meg heroes for instance voila she is a meg hero so that move can benefit if you want to cause more damage towards the queen of desert or towards anna for instance Titan Killer is very simplified depending on what you're looking for. If the enemy has higher HP than you, it will help in increasing your damage. Now, if you actually just want a percentage of ability to launch an extra attack that is buffed up in percentage, when the enemy, their HP is lower than half the bar, half 50%, an additional attack will automatically be triggered, like the skill attack, for instance, something similar like that which will give that extra boost that can